<sighs> right. So I just recorded that whole thing, or thought I recorded the whole thing, and I didn't push the record button. Um, let's see if I can how I go talking to this camera. It's a bit strange, actually. I am Patrick Leiferman, and this is my COVID-19 story. Hi, I'm Dane Cooper, and this is my COVID-19 story. Uh, g'day. Well, COVID-19 has been an interesting experience for me, something that I've never experienced before, as many others have probably found it's the same. My name's Craig Richards. I'm a landscape photographer from the Great Ocean Road area. Let you guys know how the pandemic's been affecting myself and these other photographers. I run Five Magics Photo Imaging, which is a printing studio based in Sydney. We do fine art prints for photographers. We do acrylic prints from small photo blocks to large acrylic wall mounts, we do metal prints, we do canvas, as well as um, prints mounted on uh, different foam boards or um, aluminium composite panels. I run photography workshops here in Australia and New Zealand. I've, uh, I've got a souvenir range of postcards, greeting cards, magnets that I sell uh, throughout tourist outlets in Victoria here in Australia and I'm also a reseller for Nissi filters, Surui um, tripods and Sunway photo products. Now I've been a full-time landscape photographer for over 20 years now and it's, uh, it's taken 20 years to, uh, to get to a point where things are finally just starting to really move ahead nicely and then within a matter of weeks everything came to a grinding halt. I run a photographic gallery here on Main Street, Mornington, on the Mornington Peninsula. We've had that open for about 18 months or so now. 
And for the last 15 years, I also have been running my own photographic workshops. Um, I've been taking photos now for, uh, I think about uh, 15 years or so. I spend probably most of my time when I'm not working. I spend a lot of time with my camera, to be honest, taking photos on the coast here and in a forest or chasing a waterfall or, or something like that. Um, nature plays a big role in my mental health and my escape, I guess, from the reality of life where I can get out and just relax and just let all the troubles just sort of calm down for the time that I'm out there. Anyway, as you can imagine, Five Magics was also affected by the uh, coronavirus and at the moment things are pretty bad. So I went from 100% production to basically between 30 and 40% production. To me it all really hit in mid-March. So before then I was following the uh, coronavirus news and I knew what was happening and, and in Australia and around the world but in uh, mid-March probably in the space of a week and a half I just didn't have any more orders um, just everything stopped completely and nothing happened for a week or a week and a half I knew what was happening you know with the coronavirus and all that but I just wanted to see if I was the only one or it was across the board um, it didn't take me long to find out that it was across the board. I ran customers, competitors, suppliers, and they were all in the same boat. So, um, in the next couple of weeks, I, um, I started to do things that I've been procrastinating or that I've been wanting to do for the last year or so. Uh, projects that I had in mind in the back burner. I knew it was the right time to start working on those projects and I also knew that if um, or when things picked up again um, I would regret it if I didn't do it. So I, I started doing that and I'm glad I did. Um, I think in times like these you know it's um, if you're running a business and it's not going very well um, Personally, I don't want to be very quiet, so I try to keep myself busy and, and, and do new things. It's a time to reinvent myself. It's a perfect opportunity to, to, to start new projects and review my business, put everything into perspective and see what happens. So it was Wednesday the 18th of March and I had a workshop to Flinders Island booked for the following Monday, Monday the next week. And that night was the night that I decided that I had to cancel my first workshop. So I just felt it wasn't safe to go. Um, not that the island wasn't safe. We were heading to Flinders Island, which is a beautiful, pristine island just off Tasmania. It was more if we somehow took coronavirus to Flinders Island, then I didn't want to be responsible for that. Um, plus, they'd probably never let me back on the, back on the island. I didn't want that because I love it there. So I made the decision to cancel that. <clears throat> and that was funny because the, the next morning, um, Tasmanian government closed the borders. So we weren't going anyway. It's funny how you can stress about things and worry about it. And then your mind's been made up for you anyway. So the following week, I then canceled all of my workshops for the whole year because everything was starting to snowball then. You know, Tasmania closed its borders, WA closed its borders. Shortly after New Zealand closed its borders, all of a sudden you couldn't fly anywhere, you couldn't do anything. So I shut everything down for the whole year. And look, financially that's been a massive hit. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been a, a big hit to the bank balance. Um, you know, luckily I've had money in reserve that I've had to fall back on to give, you know, I've had to pay back. Um, bucket loads of money to you know, people giving their deposits back, giving their funds back and then of course I sort of got caught out a little bit where suppliers don't give you cash back, they give you a credit which is great but it doesn't help your cash flow. So yeah look financially it's been a big hit. I went through a similar thing back in 2009 when the GFC hit the global financial crisis, remember that one? Yeah I remember it. 
So at the time I had a thriving home gallery that I was selling lots and lots of framed photos and everything was going spectacularly well then and then the GFC hit and then it was like this, bang, it just all got shut off. You went from here to here overnight very quickly. Now, back then, um, I had to reinvent myself because I looked forward and I had to ask myself, when we come out of this, are people still going to be wanting to buy framed photos and artwork because that was the, the, the bulk, of my, um, bulk of my income. So I looked at it and I really thought, no, I don't think they are. So um, I had just started doing some workshops and I was really enjoying them. So I really pushed ahead with that. So I pushed ahead with the workshops and I shifted my business away from the framed photos. And I'm lucky I did because that's the way that it all went. Both of those pretty much came to a grinding halt as soon as um everything shut down and went into lockdown so the gallery was closed for six weeks and my workshops obviously ceased to run so that just put an end financially to what was coming into the business on both levels which um, presented a challenge we just wanted to make sure that we cut our expenses as much as possible we got a rent free period for our gallery while the doors were closed for those six weeks so that was a real bonus um, obviously none of the workshops were running but we were really worried about clients who had already booked on workshops asking for refunds we were holding over hundred and fifty thousand dollars in forward future bookings for workshops for this year and next year so that's not um, cash that we hold in our accounts at any one time so at the end of the day that would have been a real struggle had all of those people come back to us and, and requested a refund. But thankfully, uh, they didn't, which was a great support to us. And, and um, we really appreciated people's faith in that they knew that we would obviously be able to deliver on those workshops, perhaps not during this time. We have canceled three workshops thus far, actually four. There's um, three overseas workshops plus a local workshop. The local workshop at Karajini, we've pushed back to April next year. And uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get across the WA to run that. Um, the other overseas workshops have been postponed until next year, but we don't know whether they'll go ahead yet or not. So um, we're really grateful for the support that we've received from our loyal clientele who have um, allowed us just to hang on to that money and keep the businesses afloat in the meantime. Uh, mentally, it's it's been it hasn't been good to be honest. Um, it's it's been really hard uh, not being able to get out and do what I love, and um, even to be in nature and see how beautiful the world is. Been editing some photos and trying to learn some new techniques and and that sort of thing. And I mean, I have I've definitely definitely changed uh, my style of photography a little bit in the last um, few weeks I guess so I've just been pushing myself and trying to learn as much as I can about editing and and that sort of thing um, I mean anyone that thinks that they haven't got anything to learn from Photoshop or Lightroom or any other sort of editing programs that they use or anything like that there's always always something new to learn being a bit flat has definitely affected me creatively like I've also been spending quite a bit of time on the couch to be honest watching TV which is something I just in the last five years or so it's something I've done very little of it's just brain dead activity that I don't like doing I prefer to be moving being outside learning something or something like that so just being stuck in front of a TV watching a TV programs not really my thing I guess I've got a financially it hasn't hurt me too much the pandemic, I've I've been very lucky. Um, I had plans to actually move over to New Zealand in the middle of this year, and I'm actually working full time at the moment as a chef in a hospital. So as you can imagine, um, that's a pretty stable job to have when there's a pandemic around. Is to be working in a hospital. I know things will go back to normal, whatever the new normal is, but things will get better. In the meantime, I'm following the news, maybe 20 minutes a day, just to keep up with the latest and see what's happening. 
Um, I don't let the news affect my life. I try to stay positive. Um, while I'm doing production here at Five Magics, I normally listen to podcasts and they, they, they really lift my spirits. Um, I'm a positive person by nature, so um, I know things will go back to normal, hopefully rather sooner than later. So, what does the future hold for us in the next few months or until the end of the year? Yeah, there's too many variables to um, predict the future. The one thing I do every day is remind myself and be grateful for um, living in a country like Australia. Having a government that supports business. Uh, I know there's a lot of people complaining, but um, it could be a lot worse. These countries were with, with no support whatsoever. I know where I come from is certainly more difficult. So I remind that myself every day and I'm grateful for that. So looking forward now, um, I won't be reinventing myself. I, I don't feel that I need to. I am looking forward and thinking once we get back into uh, normal life, if it's ever going to be normal, but it will get back to some form of normality. Then there's still going to be tourists. You know, tourists will come back, they'll buy postcards, and there's always going to be people that want to do workshops and buy camera gear. So I'm pretty lucky this time around that I can actually just sit this out, ride it, and then continue on with my business. Whereas back in uh, 09, I had to you know, take a major shift. And I guess this would be for you know um, any business now, you'd have to look forward and you know take that sort of approach. Is you have to think about what you're offering the client and is that what they're going to want in these new times. So I'm lucky that I think I'll be fine. I'm actually keeping really busy through these times. You may think that uh, all of us landscape photographers just now have nothing to do, but we are running businesses and there's lots of, there's always back end stuff to do. I've been really busy just doing stuff that I had in the pipeline, stuff that I had penciled in, um, projects to do, things to start that I just didn't have time to in the past. So it's been, you know, I had to say it's been a been an absolute godsend in, in that regard and you know like my diary is full every day I've got a bucket load of stuff to do so it's been good um, and I think you find you know a lot of people are in the same boat they've got more time on their hands they're going out for walks you know um, apparently you can't buy a push bike you know I went into Kmart the other day with my son and daughter and there wasn't a push bike in there they all gone and the, the local bike shop down here is absolutely flat out and his whole wall is just empty. Everybody's bought bikes because they're out riding. Anyway, it's good. I've been doing online courses. I've done some business courses and I've done some photography courses. You know, it's been great in that regard. So I think also I'm lucky that I'm not sitting around with nothing to do. So that's been certainly helpful to get through this time. And we'll probably come out the other end and I probably won't have finished everything that I wanted to do. So, yeah, in a way, having all this extra time for me has been a good thing. And look, mentally, I'm fine. Um, yeah, I think I am. I'm pretty sure I am. No, I am. Um, yeah, and look, my wife sort of has said to me a few times, she said, I don't know how you're handling this. You're, you're fine. You're not stressed. You're not worried. You know, and considering what's happened, and I think, well, you know, I'm lucky that's just the way I am. I don't get sort of caught up in that type of stuff. If it's something I can control, then I will worry about it and I'll, and I'll stress about it. But anything that's out of my control, and this is out of all of our control, then I just roll with it and go with it. There's nothing you can do about it, so I just get on with life. I think one positive that will come out of this is people are looking at their life a little bit differently now. I think we've all had time to slow down, we've had time to reflect, you know, we've had time to look at our lives and see what we do have and what we don't have. And I think we've all really had time to learn what's important in our life and what's not. So I've certainly seen it in my life, it's, uh, it's reinforced, you know, how much I do have and the things that are really important to me, you know. and. The number one there is family and you know family and loved ones 
and just how lucky a life we do really have. The gallery has uh, since reopened and has been open for two weeks and we've already taken um, some great sales already for the prints that we've sold. I think um, what has happened is that people have spent time at home and had time to think about perhaps renovations they'd like to do on their home or they've had time to do those renovations or get onto them quicker than they thought they would. We've had people come into the gallery requesting artwork, they've spent time looking at our website and uh, deciding what they'd like to hang on their walls. So we've been busy the last couple of weeks, which has been fabulous. But in the meantime, things are still pretty much in the, up in the air with regards to whether we'll go back down in, into a lockdown, depending on what will happen. Um, we're just trying to be really conservative with money and cash flow. Um, certainly, you know, the workshops are still up in the air for overseas workshops in particular. It looks like we'll be able to run our local workshops and we're putting more and more of those into our schedule for the remainder of 2020 and 2021. But certainly those overseas workshops are, are up in the air, which is a shame because we've had clients waiting for, um, you know, to participate in workshops uh, for, you know, 18 months, two years already. And uh, if they get pushed back another 12 months or so, that'll be even longer. So I feel for them who are wanting to come to places like Lake Baikal in Siberia and Russia and uh, other places. And they've been waiting a long time in order to um, obviously go there. So let's, um, let's keep our fingers crossed that it all goes well. Um, we've, we've, we've done well so far through this crisis. Um, one of the things that I did do in particular over the six weeks of being at home and not being able to run my workshops or be at the gallery was to run a series of online workshops and presentations for the people on Facebook who follow me. And so they were feature length presentations of anywhere from sort of 45 minutes up to an hour and a half, two hours where I presented on a range of different topics, including places that I've been to before, both personally for photo shoots, as well as running multiple workshops. Iceland, Faroe Islands, and uh, other places like Cradle Mountain, the Kimberley, Karajini, etc. And they've been very well received. We've had up to 170 people watching those live on our Facebook group. And then we also record those sessions and put them up onto our website. So on our website, tomputt.com, we now have over 22 of those feature length presentations available. But my photography business is definitely taking a bit of a toll. It hasn't really gone backwards, it just hasn't moved forwards, I guess. I have worked on my business a little bit since the pandemic, but obviously sales for prints and all that sort of thing have, have dropped. I recently became a reseller for the Nissi filter systems and filters and the Saruri tripods, which I'm really excited about. Um, the two products that I use and I I recommend them to everyone even before that I used to sell them so um, I'm really excited to be able to sell the products that I've been recommending but that being said nobody's spending money at the moment so and I mean it's understandable everybody's so unsure of what's going to happen in the future and the, the few extra dollars that you've got you kind of need to keep in your pocket at the moment so yeah my business plan going ahead is to hopefully get the business going. I know I've got a bit of a way to go before I become a full-time photographer so I'll be pushing my business later this year to try and get a few more workshops going on, selling some more prints, selling products and that sort of thing. It'll be a bit of a focus. Um, I can definitely see a market now uh, for online learning as in FaceTime sort of stuff uh, with Zoom and Skype and that sort of thing. I think it'll be it'll be hard for people to go and do a workshop and travel for not could be for for years to come. To be honest, um, I think having that slightly available cheaper option of being able to teach people how to edit some of the fundamentals of photography through FaceTime and Skype and that sort of thing. I think there's a real market there, and I think that'll be something that a lot of people will go forward with and that'll be a bit of a bit of a marketing thing that people will look into in the future if they're not already. What else? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's about it. So stay positive, stay healthy, mentally strong and we'll get through this together. So I think maybe on the flip side of all of this, you know, I'm hoping we may enter into a society that's just a little bit nicer. Everyone's a bit more thoughtful, a bit more kind and caring. Let's hope so anyway. 
there was a silver lining to all of this time off, which was to spend that time usefully to do the things that perhaps we haven't had time to do before, such as recording those presentations. And I normally do those face-to-face -face at camera clubs, but of course that uh, hasn't been possible. So it's been a nice way to still educate, reach and inspire people at this time, but uh, not have to leave home. So that's about it. We've, um, we've, I think we've used the time wisely and, uh, and it looks like financially we'll be okay so long as we can continue to get the support from our workshop participants and those people who love photographic art and uh, come into the gallery and purchase the artwork. Cheers. Yeah, thanks Nikki. Thanks for letting me be a part of your project. Yeah, and I hope everybody's staying safe and we can get through this and we can get back out and be our normal selves soon and do, do what we love.